Hello everyone, welcome to video lecture series of computer organization and architecture. Today's topic is floating point division. In this video, I'll be telling you the flow chart for the algorithm how to divide two floating point numbers. Let us begin. First, you must recall what is floating point number. The floating point numbers usually have a decimal points. If you have written a number as 6.5 or 100.5 means those are the floating point numbers and you must remember that IEEE 7.5 standards for floating point arithmetic operations was established in year 1985 and from year 1990 it is the most commonly used representation. And any number which is a floating point number it can be represented with this particular form which is M m is the mentis r into base raised to the power e. For example, you have written a number 0 0.1234. So this is the mentis r. 10 raised to the power minus 5. 10 is the base and minus 5 is the exponent. So there are three important components. One is the sign, second is the mentis r and third is the exponent. Now let us talk about the flow chart for floating point division. You must recall what we have discussed. For floating point division, there is no requirement to align the mentisas. Means division can be formed by dividing two mentisas and subtracting the exponents. This is very simple. And this algorithm can be divided into five steps. This is the flow chart. You must be able to understand this. This is very easy. See, when you have to divide the two numbers, divisor is in BR, dividend is in the AC. Suppose you have to perform this operation AC upon BR, right? So first condition is check for zeros. Check for zeros means what happened if BR, which is the denominator, if this is zero, what will happen in this particular case? If divisor is zero, then in this particular case, it indicates the attempt to divide by zero, which is an illegal operation means something upon 0 which is the infinite. So divide by 0 this is the illegal operation and operation will terminate with an error message something. Second condition what will happen if AC is 0 while BR is non-zero right. So what will happen in this particular case AC is 0 BR is non-zero it means now the result which you are getting question that will be the 0, 0 upon something that will be equal to the 0 means in this particular case what you are setting question that is equal to the 0. The next possible condition when AC is non-zero and BR is also non-zero then you need to follow this particular step. Right. So first step is complete you have checked for the zeros BR is non-zero. AC is non-zero. Then at the very first step, because the operands are not zero, means now we have to determine the sign of the quotient and sign of quotient will be stored in the QS. So how to check the sign? AS XOR BS, right? Take its XOR, store it into the QS and the sign of the dividend is in AS and the sign of the divisor will be in BS. So accordingly you have kept it. Now you must recall that Q is being set as 0 because Q register is cleared and the sequence counter is set with a value which is equal to the number of bits in the question. Why n minus 1? Because 1 bit will represent the sign and n is the total bit so n minus 1 bits will represent the magnitude only. Right? Now what is going to happen? You are performing means this is what initializing register evaluation of sign this is being done. Next step is what align the dividend. So when you are dividing something it means when you are dividing A from B what is going to happen? You are taking some quotient and you are writing here the divisor you are subtracting something. So how this particular subtraction can be performed by taking two's complement of B add it to the A it will be done which is the next step and this particular result will be stored in the register EA. EA is a flip flop which store the carry overflow if there is any. If E is 1 right 
what is going to happen it means the number a is greater than or equal to b so now the original value is to be restored original value is to be restored means again b is being added initially what is being done a minus b now you have added b it means original value is being restored at the time shift right operation is also performed shift right the contents of accumulator shift right the contents of accumulator and along with the exponents will increase let me take the example if the content of a is for example 0.124 into 10 raised to the power 4 suppose this 1.124 into 10 raised to the power 4 now what will happen if you are performing shift right shifting right you will be writing the result 0 0.1 1 2 into 10 raised to the power what 5 means here exponents will increase so that is why you have written a plus 1 if upon one shift right one exponent will increase right that is how you have written a plus 1 again what is going to happen because subtract the exponents subtracting exponents means one exponent is in a another exponent is in b you are subtracting this so what is this particular operation a minus b is what a plus b bar plus 1 and here bias is being added because when you are dividing the exponents a upon b or when you are dividing the mentis a c upon b r so both are having the bias components that is being cancelled out so that is why the bias is being added now whatever the result you are having that is the stored into the accumulator small a which con uh, contains the exponent right so that is being transferred into the q because capital q will retain the mantissa part quotient mantissa and small q will contain the exponent what will happen when e is equal to 0 it means this is a condition a is less than b again b is being added to restore it and the same operation for the exponents right so this is how and at the end divide magnitude of mantissas as if we have done in the case of the fixed point numbers this is the last step divide the mantissas and that will be the end of the program so this is how the overall flowchart you can explain the overall operation you can understand thank you so much for watching this video